Hi, my name is Lindsay Dorn, and today I will be teaching you about bank reconciliation. So first of all, what is bank reconciliation? Well, bank reconciliation it explains the difference between the amount shown in a bank statement and the organization's books. Now, why is bank reconciliation used? Well, there are a few reasons that bank reconciliation is used in accounting. First of all, it is to ensure that there are no errors on the statement or in the books. Secondly, bank reconciliation is used to update books for new items. And third, bank reconciliation is used to calculate how much cash we have after all outstanding items are cleared. Now, what exactly are outstanding items? Well, an outstanding check is one example of an outstanding item, and it is a payment of a check that is recorded by the issuing entity but it hasn't cleared the bank account as a deduction from the cash balance, and that's because checks must go through the mail. So, in more simplistic terms, an outstanding item has been issued, but the cash has not been deducted. Now, what causes outstanding items to occur in accounting? The main reason for outstanding items to happen is because of timing differences. These timing differences may occur between the books and the bank statements or between the books and the actual bank. So for example, one way that a timing difference can occur is if a, a check is issued by the entity, but it has not been received by the other one because it is being sent in the mail. Another reason for a timing difference in out, an outstanding item to occur is for something called a deposit in transit. This is when a company receives a check and records it as received in the bank account and they deposit the check in the bank, but the cash is actually deducted from the bank account at a later time. This could possibly be because of the bank is on off hours or they're on a holiday. So an outstanding item is one item that is on an account. So other items that are in bank accounts are electronic funds transfers, and this is an abbreviated as EFT. So an electronic funds transfer is a, when funds are transferred to an account without being told. So for example, one company may be issuing funds to pay back a company um, for something that they purchased. Um, this company that is issuing the money issuing the money might not be telling the company that should be receiving the money. So this is an electronic funds transfer. Something else is interest. So interest could be taken in or taken out of any, any company. Another thing is bank fees. And bank fees are charged by the bank and most of the times, the bank does not notify the company that bank fees are occurring. Another item that could affect bank reconciliation is a credit or a debit memo. And so what this is, for credit, a credit memo is a transaction that reduces accounts receivable. And as you might expect, a debit memo would be the opposite. This is a transaction that reduces the accounts payable. And one example of a debit memo is a service fee. Um, and so this is when the bank fee expense is debited and cash is credited. And that's, that's a bank fee. So most of the fees are debit memos. Um, and then for credit, a credit memo um, is added to the accounting records and cash is debited and interest revenue or interest income is credited, and that is when interest is added. So those are two examples of debit and credit memos. And one last thing that can be used in bank reconciliation is bounced or voided checks. As you can see, there are a lot of issues with checks, but this is when there's not enough money in the checking account to cover the payment by um, the person who issues the check. and a bounced or avoided check is also called a NSF check, and that means non-sufficient funds, which means the person issuing the check does not have sufficient funds 
to cover the amount they're um, putting on the check to be deducted from their bank account. Now, the last thing I'll be covering in this video is how the comparative process works for bank reconciliation. So this is the steps of how to complete a bank reconciliation. First, you should identify the bank statement in the books. So for example, this Alaskan bank is a bank statement. It's issued by the bank. This, the general ledger for military, is an example of a company's books. The next step is to check off similar items. So between the bank statement and the general ledger, we can see that check number 729 and check number 729 are both there. So we can check those off. Similarly, check number 814 is on both statements. And there are a few others as well, and you can check those off. The third step in bank reconciliation is to find and correct errors. So in our example between Alaskan Bank and Militaire, we have a deposit here on December 31st in the company books, but it does not show up on the bank statement. So to correct that, in the bank reconciliation sheet, we must add a deposit in transit to the bank side of the sheet. When you find and correct errors in bank reconciliation, you must also adjust for timing differences. So, some timing differences that we talked about earlier are outstanding checks. In this example, one outstanding check is check number 836. It shows up on the general ledger, but not in the bank statement. So, to account, to account for that, on the bank reconciliation sheet, you must less that from the bank statement side of the sheet. The fifth step is to calculate the adjusted bank balance. To do this, you will use your bank reconciliation sheet between the bank and the books that you have added and less amounts from. You must add the balance for each side of the bank reconciliation sheet, add the items that needed to be, need to be added, and subtract the items that need to be subtracted. The total should come out to be equal. The last step in the bank reconciliation compar comparative process is to make journal entries. So these journal entries will be based on the bank reconciliation sheet that you just used between the banks and the company's books. Some common journal entries are cash, accounts receivable, interest revenue, service charge expense, and rent expense. Well, that's all I have for bank reconciliation. I hope you enjoyed my video.